Hello, my name is Fiona, and I'm a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Study.com. If you are preparing to take the Praxis Social Studies Content Knowledge Government Civics and Political Science Test 5081, then let's review some of the types of questions you may encounter on the exam. Let's jump right in. Devolution is the basis of which form of federalism? A. Dual federalism. B. Cooperative federalism. C. Creative federalism. Or D. New federalism. Let's begin by defining the two terms in the question. Devolution and federalism. Devolution, that is the delegation of power to a lower level, most commonly from national to regional government. Federalism. This is the division of power between the individual territories and the federal government. So now we're going to look at each form of federalism. Dual federalism. This is where power is divided between the various levels of government in specified terms. Cooperative federalism. This is when different levels of power cooperate in policymaking. Creative federalism. This was the structure used during the 1960s and 1970s in the United States. The main characteristic being the federal government dictates their priorities to regional governments and then funds them to implement policies. Lastly, we have new federalism. This is the political philosophy of devolution. The shift of certain powers from the federal government to the state government. So this answers our question clearly. D, new federalism. Which of the following forms of government exercise authority over every aspect of life, use terror to force people to follow their orders, and have a specific ideology? A, autocracy, B, totalitarian, C, monarchy, or D, democracy? Let's define each. Autocracy. In this system, one person rules, controls all decision-making with little or no input from others, and creates structured and rigid conditions for the people. Totalitarianism. This type of regime asserts control over all aspects of citizens' lives through force, oppression, and intimidation. Monarchy. With a monarchy, the head of state is a king or queen, and sometimes there are other titles. With the passing of the monarch, a relative will assume power, and therefore the system is hereditary. Democracy. Some key aspects include the respect for basic human rights, for rule of law, free and fair elections, and citizen participation. So based on this information, we can rule out democracy, monarchy, and autocracy, and our answer is totalitarian. Which of the following is an example of an advantage gained by having a unitary system? A. More room for policy innovation is present. B. Acting in an emergency is easier. C. Less legislation is necessary. Or D. Ethnic, cultural, and economic needs are easier to accommodate. Let's begin by defining unitary system. This political structure is one with one level of authority. While there may be several levels of government, the primary central authority maintains control. All right, now let's look at our options. More room for policy innovation is present. Not the case. Because local government lacked the authority to innovate at a grassroots level, and the centralized government is unlikely to do so. All right, I'm going to skip. Less legislation is necessary. Again, not the case. Legislation is necessary in both federal and unitary systems of government for the purposes of maintaining organization within the society and protecting its citizens. Ethnic, cultural, and economic needs are easier to accommodate. 
Again, no, this isn't the case. It is difficult for local government to affect change that may be required specifically in their region due to this lack of any real authority. All right, acting in an emergency is easier. Yes, this is the case. Because there is only one level of government involved in decision making, it can happen much quicker and much more easily. So B is the answer. Society seeks to change government laws associated with voter rights. However, lawmakers cite a lack of need because voting rights laws have been appropriate for some time. Facts, not revolutionary influence, should guide the changing of such laws. The example above describes a political view most characteristic of which of the following? A. Liberalism B. Libertarianism C. Environmentalism or D. Conservatism Very briefly, let's define each. Liberalism. It advocates for the rights of each person, their freedom and equality, and the right to private property. Libertarianism. This political philosophy supports the least amount of government intervention in both the private lives of citizens and the free enterprise economy. Environmentalism. The key focus here is the protection of the environment. And finally, conservatism. Adherents advocate for the preservation of tradition within its institutions, laws, standards, and values. Based on these descriptions, I think we can safely rule out the first three and conservatism is the correct answer here. I hope I was able to answer your questions so that you can get a better understanding of the topics you can expect to find on the test. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.